Good afternoon, Internet. We are live again, Last Resort Live, here at the Burton U.S. Open. A big show about to go down, of course, men's slope style. The riders have been practicing. We saw the way the ladies took it. Jamie Anderson with a big win. On a gasser in second, on in third. So it's been a good day, you know. Weather still cooperating again. If you want to check out me, with, if you want to check out a stream without me, get over to Red Bull TV. But as you found out in the last stream, we will be split screen with action as soon as there is action to see. But for now, this is your behind the stage access at the US Open allowing you to see side of things you wouldn't always get to see. Weather still cooperating. The course is still buzzing, okay? This could be anybody's game. Red Gerard's out here, qualified pretty low, gonna wanna probably do something about that. And of course, Dusty Henriksen qualifying first. I honestly can't wait to see him because his kid is insane. Uh, he's practicing in a t-shirt and he has a chain wallet, so. Huge energy, we've got Red Gerard kinda Strolling in. I saw him practicing. He's kind of practicing seemingly pretty well. Nate's grabbing his board. Whoa. Do you do you need it? Do you need a wax? Yeah, the fastest stuff you got. The fastest <laughs> stuff you got, according to Red. Red, buddy. Yeah. Must feel good to just be in this position. Beautiful day. I mean, what's the energy? What's the vibe? Is there any like is Baden even in the back of your mind, even just a little bit, just as an energy? What what's going on? Baden's not working in my mind, all right? I brought him some cough drops this morning. His throat was a little tickled. Okay. Um, but, yeah, the course is running insane. I think this is one of the first days that we've had on it where you can, like, fully see not a cloud in the sky. I heard you were Speaking talking Speaking of Baden, Baden's <laughs> yeah. here. Nick Baden, of the course, live. Is that what you yeah, we were looking for a little bit of confrontation here. I was asking if he's even worried about you today. He said, not a thought in my mind about Nick Baden. Anything, uh, any... Any comment on that, Baden? Um, if I was him, I would be worried because uh, we've been watching The Undertaker recently, okay? And that's a pro tip. Y'all should check it out if you want to. Stone Cold Steve Austin, yeah. The Undertaker, yeah. and Vicky. And Vicky. And Vicky. Yes. All important and uh, good for mind, body, soul. So you guys kind of wake up, maybe check in on some wrestlers, some undertakers, kind of try and bring that energy out here today. Sets the tone for the day, for sure, especially when it's freaking finals, you know? Yeah. Shows in the riding. Absolutely, Baden. Baden, are you going to be coaching Red Gerard at all today, or uh, are you kind of... That's uh, not really my job. I'm more of the distraction. Okay. So, uh, yeah, anytime that he's talking to a coach or in an interview, I jump in and say... Let my man show. <laughs> He's got to go. Yeah. I get it. I see what's happening, oh, yeah. Red. Yeah. Escapes. Later, you know. and, I'm out too. and now Nick Baden's out, too, therefore stealing our entire interview thunder. But a little bit of an idea of the energy that's going on up here. Red's smiling. He's having a good time. He's hanging out with his buddy, Nick Baden. But let's go take a classic look at that drop-in ramp, one of my favorite places to stand here on the course because it makes me feel like I'm important. And there it is, the course workers raking out these lips last minute. You know this course is going to be pristine. Brandon Sauer behind me here, another important Burton member. Just this place is just crawling with them. You wouldn't believe it. This place is crawling with important Burton employees. Today, what can we expect during this finals? Again, I've said it before, maybe the unexpected. Yes, Red Gerard is a favorite to win as we see He's loving the weather, but honestly, Judd Hankey's also riding incredibly well, and in my opinion, kind of has something to prove, okay? He's not taking some of the results like some of his friends have. If I had to guess, I'd say he's looking to take a big victory today, but don't count out Dusty Henriksen, of course, the young gun who has shown up this year in a way that we might not have expected. Taking a win at the Mammoth Grand Prix, taking a win at the U.S. Junior Olympics, and uh, probably something, <laughs> one other thing that I'm forgetting. <laughs> but Dusty's here, his style's good. I mean, they were showing uh, cameras during practice, and Dusty is literally practicing in a T-shirt. That's how confident he is that he is not gonna get fall, and 
that he's not going to fall and get snowburn. Everyone's least favorite part about snowboarding, or at least mine. So, again, it's been an insane week here. This morning, we just checked off women's finals. Insane field of riders, six of the best. Happened pretty quick, almost too quickly. Haley Langland suffered an injury, wasn't able to pull out that run, but still showing us everything. Anna Gasser going double crippler on the first hit, which note some of these men's runs. I'm pretty sure that there are men out here who are basically going to be doing that same trick. So that's just kind of a indicator for the level that Anna is kind of riding at right now. And of course, only going home in second. So crazy field of competitors. Jamie Anderson taking the win again. I bet that there is a riders meeting going down. So we are gonna go this way to the riders meeting. Do a quick listen up. And yes, we are a little late for the riders meeting, but sorry, after you. Neil, hello, Eric following me as we find Dusty Hendrickson, we've been talking about the kit all morning. Dusty, practicing in a t-shirt, is it a flex? I mean I'm pretty hot so why not? <laughs> Flexing on him, not even afraid of snow burn, also the chain wallet, can we talk about it? We can dude, you know sometimes when you're just pulling your wallet out of your pocket and you drop it. You know, it's just right there. It's just right there. Fashion and function exactly. here before, and not to mention, we've talked about it, the pink brimmed hat. Respect, where did we pick this thing up? We picked this up at the Shell gas station on the way out of Mammoth, on the way here. Wow. Respect. Okay, so when you are in this position, you've probably not really been at the U.S. Open in a position like this, having qualified first. Is this something that you're excited about, nervous, angry with me for talking to you? What is it? All the above except the last one, man. You yes. can talk to me all day. Man. Okay. Now, a couple big wins for you this year, obviously. Pre-setting the stage. When you showed up at this event, and be honest, this is not the time to be humble, did you think that you could end up qualifying first and showing up? I mean, I definitely knew that, but you never know what's going to go down, so you just got to put it down and run and see what happens. Okay. Now, maybe not who do you think is going to win, but who is going to be your favorite rider to watch out there? Uh, I don't know. I like watching everybody because everyone's got their own little style, but Jed's definitely one of my favorite for yeah. sure. Yeah, I just, I've grown up riding with him, so he's been like my big brother in style. Yeah, I'm just trying to copycat. You know? <laughs> Judd Hankies, of course, I feel like has an energy going into this thing because a lot of his homies have taken this victory before, and you can tell he's hungry for it. Do you feel that in his energy? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling that vibe for sure. It's always been thrown at me. It's kind of, kind of a bummer, so but <laughs> after the comp, we'll be friends again. So. <laughs> you heard it. Judd gets a little touchy during the contest. We've seen it happen. But he is uh, riding at a level that deserves it. But, uh, Dusty, we'll talk to you again. Great chatting. It's Dusty Hendrickson. We're going to talk to Sven Thorgren over here as well. Sven Thorgren, number six. Sven. Darcy Sharp, I believe. Hard to tell. Sven Thorgren, how are we doing, buddy? How are we feeling? Tell me everything. What do we have for breakfast? I uh, had eggs and uh, toast. Okay, now, you were out here representing the Europeans. You, Torgier. What do you have to prove out here today? Uh, that I'm, I'm the only Swedish guy. So <laughs> I can uh, prove that uh, Sweden still is in there in the game. Yep. And, uh, yeah, just prove that how fun we can have. And... Uh, yeah. Who do you think would win in an arm wrestling battle, you or Stale Sonbeck? Uh, we already tried that. Stale beat me. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, ask and you shall receive. When did you guys uh, hash that one out? I don't know. We've been uh, traveling for many years now. Yeah. And uh, we're kind of competitive against each other, so it's, uh, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Fridge, obviously, not able to make it to finals. I did hear him down in the booth. How do we feel about Fridge's performance? Fridge's backpack, are we over it? Is it cliche? What do we got? 
I mean, his slam in the qualies, uh, he landed super hard on his back, and it looked like the backpack saved him. So I think should probably keep it going, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I personally, I would never ride with a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't almost not ride in, in POW, but <laughs> I'm impressed. We are all impressed, yeah. as will we be with you, I'm sure, Sven Thorgren. Someone to watch Thank out. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sven. We are in the rider's tent right before this thing is about to go down. Kind of the calm before the storm, as you can see, Sebe de Buck kind of just sitting back looking, thinking about life over here. <laughs> Sebe, you heard your name because we are live and you are the person that we are now talking to. Oh, Sebe de Buck, big point of discussion. If you make it to finals, Brady Lem has to do a double cork. How did this bet come about? Tell me about it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I was just on the phone with Iman. They were filming in Minneapolis, and Brady threw it out there. And he was like, if you make finals, I'm doing a double cork. And I was like, I got you. You're doing a double cork this year. Now, there has been discussion that he wants to do a, a double underflip, which, as we know, doesn't really count, Brady. So any thoughts about where he might want to take that next? Uh, I, I think so too. I think he has to do like a backside double, more like a double court, not a double flip. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. So uh, we saw in practice, hot little switch back lip. Are we going to add any variation? Or are we just keeping that thing steezy? We're keeping that thing steezy. Respect. And, uh, you know, if you had to, if you were a betting man, can't, don't vote for yourself. Who do you, who do you think's taking this thing? God damn, that is uh, maybe Judley. Judley has that back 10 on that second side here, which nobody else does and should get a 10 and a half, in my opinion. Judd Henke's sitting right across from us, kind of trying to probably block us out, you know, as we're talking. He doesn't want to hear what we have to say. I would be trying to block us out too. That's the truth. I would also be blocking us out. In fact, I would get a, as far away from me as possible. Russell almost taking that entire table out, looking like something out of the Matrix. You see this guy right here? Big contender. That's Russell Filmer. You know, literally big though. Literally big. That's where his table. Literally big contender. <laughs> literally the biggest probably contender on course. In fact. Uh, yeah, possibly. I think so. Six four. Four, you are one of the riders that I really look up to. Thank you. Wow, really? No, you don't have to say that. I feel like you're making that up. But, Sebi, we're going to keep on chugging, keep checking the scene. Thank you so much. Wish you so much luck. We'll catch you later. Judd, best of luck. We'll, we'll chat, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you simmer for now because I feel like you need a simmer. Zach Nigro, everyone. If you're at home, if you could stand up and give a round of applause. For Zach Nigro, thank you so, oh, actually, yeah. If the whole tent could actually, that would just be much better. He, oh, Haley Langland as well, backing away from me as I stand, oh, stand closer. But Haley, you made it, maybe feeling a little injured, true or false, had I interviewed you beforehand, you might have been able to do a little better. Yes. And that's the kind of interview answer that we look for when we do an interview. Haley, wow, who's taking this thing? Who's taking it? And it, you can say red, but we're, we'll know that you date him and- that, That's a biased answer. Um, I would love red to win, but I would also be super psyched if Judd or Dusty were also on the top podium. Kind of a hard, hard way to lose here. It's gonna be a great show. Haley, thanks for chatting with us. We're gonna go outside. I'm going outside. All right. Oh, well, you go first, because now this is weird. Okay, we'll, we'll follow her. Wow, Fridge. Hey, bud, come on. We need to talk to you, buddy. Wow, Fridge. We were just talking Fridge in the tent. Here he is up top, hair with the headband to match. Yeah, I need some colors to match the persona. Yeah. Dude, what is your vibe today? Tell me about your energy. Tell me what you've been up to. Uh, I'm just around like working, you know, like putting a lot of work. Everyone's like getting so much coverage that in finals and I want some attention, you know. Yeah. So like spicing up everything, trying to like 
absorb as much attention as possible, you know. Yes. People got to know I was here. Well, we are giving you some much needed camera time then. Fridge, I also just heard you down in the booth as well. Was yeah. that exciting for you? Yeah, that was terrifying. I've never done it before. I've always called out the commentators for being so bad at the job, and I totally get it now. Yeah. <laughs> that is actually a true statement I can make as well. I was historically making fun of commentators, and then they stick you in that little room with the glare on the TV, and you're having a hard time seeing what's happening, and you're like, wow, this is actually really hard. Yeah. Um, but fun. will I stop making fun of them? No, I, I can't. I just can't. The people need it, you know? So, Fridge, we were got about a minute a uh, minute out from starting. You know, I got to assume here are some people that you might be rooting for. You correct me if I'm wrong. Torgier. Yes. Torgier Bergram. Definitely going to be rooting for him out there. Uh, Sven. Yeah, of course. Going to be probably rooting for Sven. Um, and Stale, I'm, I'm just naming Europeans now. I'm just assuming that you only want Europeans to win. Am I off base here? No, I think like Stahl is my least favorite rider today. Okay, okay. <laughs> Stahl is his least favorite rider today. Understandable. No, no, no. A big ups to Stahl. But he's done it so much, you know. we got to give him some shit. And definitely Torger did the most shit because he's so old. Did you know what he's like? I'm like thinking earlier, like, what's most credibility? Being 17 year old and like winning qualities or being 50 plus and getting top 10? Yeah. I would say the last one is way higher, so big ups to Torgair for being fucking yes. awesome. Of course, qualifying last, but still making it. Um, now, I mean, what can we expect from a winning performance tonight? It's like, what do we expect out of a winner after the contest is over? What do they need to do to carry this thing on? I know you're no stranger to the opera. Yeah, um, I heard that the... Uh, prize giving is going to be in between concerts, so a winner tonight definitely needs to stage dive. Wow, yeah. winner tonight needs to stage dive. That's no actually shirt, stage dive. You, me? No, no, I saw her. <laughs> Honestly, I've never stage dived. Tonight could be the night. I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, you were out there on the course, man. What do you think is going to be the toughest part for these riders here today? Uh, I think it's going to be uh, the mentality. It's the sickest event of all times right here right now and uh, i think they're feeling the pressure because winning this and you're going into history books straight away yes. you know yuki giving it to us way back and people will never forget or I, at least i will always take that with me for the rest of my life this is also where you kind of yeah. blew up a little yeah for me as well making finals here was my uh, opening into getting into bigger competitions like x games and uh, stuff like that so for sure Big big event right here. here at the open the Catalina wine mixer right here this yes. is kind of the Catalina wine mixer of all contests it's not the first time we've used that metaphor and it will not be the last no it's way overused what are you uh, taking advantage of down the village you in that VIP tent you have them touch up your hair what do you got uh, yeah I might get a little touch up on my hair but mostly I'm just trying to uh, get as much free shit in there as possible food just fill up everything i probably drank like 15 red bulls total and uh yeah getting really pumped free coffee water everything's going down wow that is <laughs> respectable well fridge we're gonna keep checking the scene here but dude so much respect love chatting Thank with you. you all the time are you gonna be uh calling out the runs or uh... we're gonna hang up here for the top of the first run we've got a double screen so okay. when the action's going I'm on one side, and then they've got the action next to me. I'll be kind of calling it. Yeah, look, this is kind of what we've oh, got. Oh, Torgier went. Did he? He fell. Wait, Torgier went. We oh, began. No. Wow, look at us go. We're just yeah, chatting we're away here. Chatting Contest away. started. We got to get going, Fridge. Thank you. Thank Good you. to see you. Yeah. Okay, I guess we should probably, probably get over to the gate here. A little late to the party. That's my bad. Yo. Quick, you gotta say yo, even 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 when you're in a rush, you always gotta say yo to yo. Behind this, I wanna ruin the angle. Oh, we've got Reggie in the booth. Red Gerard. Closely behind him, Nick Baden. Not surprised by that. Not surprised that Nick Baden is closely behind Red Gerard. You can only kind of imagine what's going through Red Gerard's head right now. Will Nick Baden follow me off this jump? Is Stan going to make fun of me for this?
Should I have eaten more breakfast this morning? I don't know. Okay, I can't answer these questions for you, Red, internally. Internally. Externally, I can't either. <laughs> Nick Baden, probably one of the most educated per people, riders on this course, PhD. My internals are turning into my externals. <laughs> You heard it here first. The effect of the U.S. Open. His internals are turning into his externals. Insides turning out. That's the kind of effect that we have here at the U.S. Open. Red Gerard up top fixing his gloves, waiting for the yes. This is kind of the, the part that I wouldn't like, right? You're, the, you're sitting up top, and then you're just waiting until they tell you you can go. Whew, that would be stressful for me, I'll tell you what. Kimball got out here with a pretty legit rig. How things have, <laughs> things have gotten. <laughs> wow, big question here about will Nick Maiden be poaching? Is it okay? Unknown, okay, but there's one way to find out and in true US Open spirit, of course. You got to poach, okay? From time to time, you got to poach. I'm sure we're going to see a Terrier tomorrow. He's around. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick Baden getting prepared. If you are at home, we are going to be split screen with the action. I'm not sure they're going to show you Nick Baden's run. I will try my best to tell you what's happening during it so you're not in the dark on this one. In the meantime, I think T-Bird and Sal are finishing a crossword puzzle down there as we wait to drop Red Gerard. Just one more word and then he can go. Pat Dodge, his team manager behind him, arms crossed, grimace on his face, trying not to show his emotion. <laughs> He's looking at me now. <laughs> Reggie Gerard will be dropping. Okay, this is how we try and get on double TV. Okay, we're on this stream and we're on this stream. Okay, you see that? See how we do that? Yeah, Reg. Kind of afraid to touch the riders beforehand. I don't. I don't think that that would go over well. It's dropping in regs. Board side switch up to front board. Switch out. Cap two, he's live. He's heading on to the next feature. Okay, head block, but it was a stomp. He's going into the second feature. It was probably front head. Oh. Red Gerard's kind of on fire, I have a feeling. That one's going to be good. Kind of got to wait for uh, Pat Dodge. <laughs> How do you tell when they landed? Do you wait to hear the cheering? Do you go to the TV? What's your move? I like to watch as much as I can from up here, but then I run around and watch the TV. But I missed it because I was talking to you. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Pat Dodge. How about that, How about that switch back too? Switch back too. Was, uh-oh, Nick Baden, poacher on course, fridge right behind him. Couple big airs, tap. Nick Baden gapped a board slide, heading in for the big jump. I don't know if you guys are seeing this at home, but Nick Baden with a big method. Fridge, kind of a stale. Back three. Oh, big method from Fridge. Respect? I thought Baden was a pipe guy now. I also thought Baden was a pipe guy, but, you know, this is just going to show that Baden is as good as it gets out here poaching. I mean, what an honor to see Nick Baden out here, you know? Sebi to Buck entering the start gate. Sebi's one rider I'm not afraid to dap up before the run, you know? Sebi and I go back, way back. We're both super tall. There was discussion about filming a project called Tall Boys. It's in the work still. Trademark pending, okay, on that one. Don't steal it, basically. I have the footage here to prove that we thought of that first, so don't even try. Sebi so Buck, we talked to him earlier, he said the, the triple front was off limits. But then again, this is finals, so like, also, as we've been talking about, Brady Lamb now has to complete a double cork because Sebe Debuck has made it to a finals. I just cannot wait to see that, personally. Now, as we've seen on Instagram as well, Sebe lacing out a nice little switchback lippy on this rail up here. 
as we spoke to him earlier, he's saying he's going to do it again. So all you viewers at home, this thing's bound to be textbook. Get your notebooks out. Start taking notes. Then write him a fan letter. I don't know. Do what you got to do. Kind of blending in with the purple background here. Sebe de Buck hadn't thought about that. He's really going to try and stand out, but he just matches this. Blending yeah, in. Yeah, Kimbo God giving him one last shaka of encouragement. I don't think he's going to need it, though. The kid's style is cool, and he can hear me talking. So I shouldn't say anything too crazy. <laughs> Yes, of course, if you're just tuning in, this is Last Resort Live. I am your host, Dan. If you want the full action stream without my voice, go over to Red Bull TV. But if you're having fun listening to me behind the scenes with our little split action screen, stay right here because this is the behind the scenes look of the U.S. Open, never seen before, your favorite rider's favorite contest. And we are just blessed here, you know? You hope for weather like this on a final because if not, you have to kind of pretend like it's okay that the weather's bad, but it's really not okay. So this is nice because we don't even really have to fake it. It's perfect. <laughs> That's showbiz, you know? That's a live stream for you. Wow, Sebi, it's got to be really torturous to just have to stand here and wait. Dude, how long? What are we talking? Two minutes? No answer, so we're unsure, you know. Maybe get a couple more poachers out here. I don't know. I, of course, will not be poaching. Ah, 30 seconds till drop. We got word. Whew, just a quick, I'm breathing deep for Sebe, you know. Yes, Sebe. Okay, come on. Let's go. Big hug before the drop. Sebe to Buck, hyping him up. Going in, nice little switch back lippy. <laughs> Number eight. And here he goes. First one to hit this rail. And oh, did he. S I jinxed him. I've jinxed him. I'm sorry, Sebi, if you're watching this. I'm talking a lot about your switch back lip. And you brought that thing over 90. That can't be my fault. You. You took that thing too far, man. Come on. But respect. Had you laid that thing down, I would have thrown my mic on the ground. So there's always we've got three runs here today. It's a three-run format. Ten riders, of course. Get my little rider list out here. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. That's the ladies list, okay? Don't want to read you that. Maybe not get the list out. I don't know. I should have gotten it before I started this sentence, but whatever. Yeah, buddy. Dib seven taking his place at everyone's favorite contest. The US Open. Run one's well underway. Sebi to Buck not able to stick it down. Yeah. Red Gerard yeah, yeah, yeah. probably <laughs> lacing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Japanese homies hyping him up. You need the squad here. You just, what up? Good to see you. How are you feeling, buddy? Feels great. Yeah. Energy's high, ready to do some big stuff. Mm -hmm. For sure. Focused. That's what we love to see. Focused. <laughs> <laughs> Quick dab on him. Okay. <laughs> Yes, if you are at home and you do speak Japanese and you're thinking, I do not understand this person at all, even right now, there is a Japanese stream, of course. Uh, not able to keep it up. But, of course, there is more time. There is plenty more time to get a run that we are going to be happy with. Sven Thorgren coming up next. We spoke to him earlier. He's feeling good. Kind of hyped up the Euros. Expected. That was kind of an expected move, how he hyped up the Euros in that way. But here he comes. Powerful energy. Yes, Ben. Sven 
Thorgren, the only Swede here, as we said. Straps in. A little bit of a tense time before you're able to drop in. You know, how long will they keep you? Is there a course hold? Are they raking? I don't know. <laughs> a competitor in big air and slope alike. Sven has been in the game for a minute. By no means a rookie to the pressure that is involved with a contest. I had to guess, I'd say he's honestly feeling pretty limber. Wow, they're giving him a drop right away. Sven. And there he goes. He's off into the world. Sven Thorgren with a brief side slip as he heads switch into this rail. Oh, wow. We like to see that 270 out. Snaps that thing around. Goes 450 on the second rail. Double. Just quick double on the biggest side hit ever. Whoa. Okay. He goes front one. I'm going to assume that's where he's going to mix things up and run to, but let's try and get to the TV and see if he's able to keep this thing together. Heading into the last jump here. Big steezy back one. No grab. You've got bindings. Who needs to grab? That's respect, though. The back one on that last jump, I was just on the chairlift with Nick Baden. He actually expressed a little fear surrounding doing a back one on that jump. So you know if Nick Baden is scared, that that's serious business. Nick Baden is scared of nothing. Okay. Let's check out his run here. That was just textbook. Rail line, strong. I can't see the live scores on here, but I'm going to assume that's one of the better rail scores we will have seen today. But where did he lose it? It must have been this hit here. Ah, uh, yes. Kind of a little. You see, in some snowboard edits, when you do a layback, that's a trick. You know, you catch a Yagoon's edit. That's like a 30 seconds of a video right there, them just doing some layback. So maybe Sven was trying to channel that. Hard to say. Good rail scores, though, as we saw. Redmond Gerard sitting in first. Torgier sitting in second. You love to see that. Hiroki fourth, Sebe fifth. Again, Sebe just had to make it to finals to make Brady do a double cork. He didn't really have to, you know, do anything. And wow, here we go. Oh, in the starting gate. He's feeling limber. We already talked to him. You know, he hit us with a dab, so. Oh, Judd Henke's out here. Wow, he snuck out. Judd Henke's looking good feeling good, pounded him up. He reached out for it, so I think that's, again, I'm scared to touch these riders beforehand. I'd hate to be the reason, the last thing that they touched before they went 270. Big rail line from Judd Henke's. Big gap, 270 going into the side hit feature. One, two, tries to get that third one around. You should see me squinting. Like if my goggles were off, I'm just squinting as we try and get lower. But Judd Hankey's one of today's favorites, looking pretty solid up top. <laughs> Is he holding on? Oh, went 16 on the last jump. Barely holds on. We're gonna look for Red Gerard. Red is up here somewhere. We are gonna look for... Red Mohammed. Oh, Stale. Hey, buddy. Whew, just a quick, quick little massage for Stale here. As we try and warm him up, get him a little ready, get him loose. Stale. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. If you can guess it, I'll give you $5 later. 7? Wow, that. Oh, sh Okay, I owe you 5 bucks. Wow, I did not expect that to pan out that way, but that's a little good luck uh, before his run. Stale, so I'm back. I'll see you again, I'm sure. <sighs> Reggie, first place, wow, sitting in it. What does it mean? What do we have to do? Do we need to improve? Are we chilling? Are we sending Nick Baden down in your outerwear next? What's happening? <laughs> Man, I don't know. Yeah, it definitely feels great to land first run. That's always uh, always awesome, but it's definitely not going to hold, man. I mean, you got a field coming up here, so 
Yeah, I'd like to up some stuff, maybe. I don't know. That's kind of all I got, though. So from here on out, I'm, I'm kind of learning. So. Okay, maybe some, yeah, just learn a new trick, throw it out in the run. Just try it, see how it goes, and go from there. Okay. And, uh, you know, obviously Brock not out here today. Yeah. Are you sensing his energy at all? Is he, is he with you in solidarity? You know, I he is, yeah. I'm bummed that he's not here, but, uh, you know, he's single right now. He's probably putting in work in there. <laughs> Yes, if we'll look for him down in yeah. the corral, we'll kind of try and get a spy yeah. cam on him. Yeah, and yellow hat, fat, big old logo, energy logo. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. Look for him. Take okay, Red, red. thank you so much. Yeah. Good luck. That's right, Gerard, your current leader, okay? And as we see here, Darcy doing the pretending to be a crab for a second, just practicing what it would be like to be a crab and now... This move, I'm not really sure what this is, honestly. I don't know what that helps with, because if it was warm-up for a snowboard move, his feet are a little too loose. Maybe he's going for a one-footer, not sure. Oh, yes, now this one we like. <laughs> Big result over here. I, see, we got all distracted with Darcy Sharp. We're looking at the wrong thing. We got distracted with Darcy Sharp. Didn't notice Yuki could oh, just laid something down. We're going to have to try and, what happened? What? It, he absolutely slayed it. Watch it, watch it yourself. It's okay. Absolutely slayed it. He looks hyped up. Helmet's off. He's dancing around down there. This is a good sign. Boy is having fun down there. All right. I'm tall and I'm having a hard time seeing this TV. As you can see, very crowded up here. Wow. Yuki Kadono. A name that we have heard at the U.S. Open for years, and this is why, ladies and gentlemen, just putting it down, heading into this up rail feature. Back to, oh, holds that grab. Getting that last 180 and heading into that switch. One, two, back 16 on him. Quick back 16 on him. Light work. Light work. And there it is. Will this push him into first? Scores are coming in right now. He's holding his board up down there. And run one will deem him an 83, putting him actually just below red. Second place for Yuki Kadono. Let's get back out. out to that gay Pat Dodge, Burton TM. We've seen him all day aboard. <laughs> Eric, of course, still with us, our trusty cameraman. Without Eric, it would just be me walking around with a microphone and no one watching, and that would be awkward. Yo, sorry. Always got to say yo to yo. Stale San back up here. I literally owe him $5 after a bet that we just made where he could not guess the number I was thinking and he guessed it immediately. Is he psychic? I don't know. Stale Sonbeck helping us move right along on our men's rider dropper list in what is sure to be one of the most exciting finals we could possibly have up here. It was quite the mix up in semis. Mark Clavin described it as the sixth sense, a complete pop plot twist. Yeah. <laughs> and a quick sack tap to me from Stale. <laughs> That's respect, honestly. That's the kind of behavior we like in the drop-in gate. It's what I deserve for sticking a microphone in these people's faces. Wow. Going for the nose press on that in practice, wasn't able to see if that was press police approved, but... I'm sure it was. Going dub. What's he got into the next one? The landing on this first big side hit has been problematic for some people, not Stale. As Gimbal God works his way over to the TV to see what happens, so will we. Still on his board, always a good sign. Oh, not able. Two right away with that, but it's going to be okay, Darcy. Wow. Hey, last-minute words. My music's really loud. 
His music is really loud. You have heard it here first. Darcy Sharp kind of in a vibe right now. What's he listening to? Hard to say. Could we say some more stuff about him and test how loud his music is? We could. Darcy Sharp doing, a, I think, a jacket change up. I don't, you know, it's kind of wise. He was kind of running a similar kit to Red Gerard. Got to diversify. Got to mix that up. Can't be getting confused for Redmond out here. Quick last minute slug of water. Now, as we know, Darcy shot up into second in qualifiers, and he also shot up into first at X Games. A real clutch player when it comes to finals. Someone who has been in the mix for a while and recently really getting those results. Time limit. You know Time. he wants that gold. Minute. One minute until drop. Is he going to start over? Are you starting your song over, Darcy? Or it's too loud. You can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Dodge, the TM, again, the role of the TM at these contests is hard to describe how important it is. You are literally doing it all, supporting them, fixing their goggles, wiping their lenses, telling them that they're good people. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a whole thing. It's like, it's really tough. And Pat Dodge, one of the best in the biz, if I do say so myself. Not easy work, but... Again, if you are just tuning in here, I'm Stan Levier. This is Last Resort Live. We are on top of the men's slope course for the U.S. Open men's final runs. We saw the women earlier. Jamie Anderson with a big win. Who's going to be for the men? Red Gerard is sitting in first right now. But as you heard him say, there's no way it can hold. This field is too good. Donning the number two, Darcy Sharp takes the course. Nice little back 270, maybe a shout out to Mark Clavin. Hard to say if that's an ode to Mark Clavin or not. Really, anytime anyone does a 270 on a rail, I think it should be an ode to Mark Clavin. Nice. Handling the first jump, going right into the second. Presumably handling that one as well. And the move, as we see, to the TV to find out what has happened. Will Darcy be able to capitalize, continuing his winning streak? Wow, lays that thing down. Kind of plops down the landing gear like a cat. Crowd seems to be liking that one. Darcy's liking that one. Loud music. I can only imagine how that one feels. I think that will score him pretty well. Dusty, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Dusty, still got the t-shirt on, got the chain wallet. What are we listening to? Uh, we're listening to some Rocco Godley out here, dude. Some underground shiz. <laughs> Some underground shiz. <laughs> For Dusty. <laughs> Dusty Henriksen strapping in your first place qualifier. Probably the youngest competitor in this event as well, 17. Wearing the number one. And I got to tell you, I saw him in practice. Kid was stomping. It's like, you wouldn't know. You would think you would be nervous as a 17-year-old at a big event like this. I gotta tell you, Dusty's playing it pretty cool. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> this breaking news. Talk percolator is what's going on. That's the song. Gimbal God getting the angle. Who knows where this will show up. Follow Gimbal God. If you don't follow Gimbal God, what are you even doing with your life, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, Dusty Henderson searching for the right part of his song before his run. You can't just be dropping in all willy-nilly need to make sure everything is synced up. And as we can see with him, he's got his kit dialed. Chain wallet, t-shirt, pink gas station hat. It doesn't get any better than this. A true style icon, chain around the neck as well. Get it, buddy.
Hey, all the stuff I'm wearing right now costs me less than twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that you heard it here first. Dusty Henriksen, everything he's wearing, less than $20. How to ball on a budget. That is how we ball on a budget. Maybe if he takes some of this prize money, he can, I don't know, go crazy, spend $40. I, I, That's been my dream, dude. That's been my dream. At a real store. At a real store, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up to, like, TJ Maxx or something. Got to graduate from the first store. Ross. Maybe Ross. Oh, yeah. We are discussing places where Dusty could buy clothes. We've discussed TJ Maxx, Ross Dress for Less. I don't know if there's any clothing companies out there listening, but if you are, the sky's wide open. So, Yeah, Dusty. Dusty Anderson dropping in. Your first place qualifier, run one. 52.70 on the first rail. Didn't even see him doing that in practice. He probably was. Front board to Sev. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, buddy. This kid is a teenager, just a reminder. If you're a teenager at home, how does that make you feel? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to make you guys feel bad about yourself. <laughs> you're very important and special, I'm sure. If you're watching at home, he's got, he's stomping. Deep back trip goes deep back trip. Dusty Hendrickson has shown up to play. Okay, that is for sure. A young gun out here. We are enjoying ourselves up atop the slope course. We've got a couple minutes left here before we are gonna make our way down to the corral. You know, it's kind of a fun energy down there. See if Brock Crouch is talking to any girls, as Red told us he might be. We'll make our way out. Tour gear. Damn. How are we? How are we feeling? I'm feeling pretty good, man. How are you feeling? Good. You were sitting in second for a hot second there. Oh, yeah, dude. I was you actually fun. were in first for a second. I was, yeah. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, you know, not everyone gets to be in first in a U.S. Open final, so yeah. Yeah, oldest competitor out here, and you just saw maybe the youngest competitor. Yeah. Do you feel like you want to fight him, or are you proud of him? What's the energy? It's kind of more like a dad-like feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I want to just share yeah. all of my experience <laughs> with him. Yes, okay. Uh, I feel like he's got more experience than me right now. But <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if he's ready for the onslaught of experience that you've had, but yeah. going into second run, how are we feeling about the course? Any insights that you want to let our viewers at home know about? Um, yeah, it might be a little snow snake lurking on that first uh, side hit, so you got to watch out for that. Okay. But other than that, it's running pretty smooth. All right. Well, Torgier, we're wishing you luck. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. We'll be staying with you. We'll be down in the corral. Maybe we'll talk again. Awesome. All right. I look forward to it. I look forward to that, too, okay? Yeah. Recapping the run ones. We've seen some impressive stuff. Reggie Gerard, a.k.a. Sorry, Reggie's his nickname. It's Red Gerard sitting in first. Unless Dusty actually was able to take it. I don't know. I'm not standing near the live score. But we've seen a lot of great stuff. And uh, the great news is that was just run one. As Red said, there's no way these results can hold. The field is too heavy. Don't forget, if you're getting tired of watching me, you can always head over to Red Bull TV and just watch the classic announcement. We do have action next to us. And while I'm gone, because we're going to disappear for run two, make our way down, maybe a little quick side poach of the course, we don't know, head on over to Red Bull TV. And we'll be back for run three for a final recap of what's going down. This is Last Resort Live with Stan. We'll see you soon. Are you Last Resort out now? Yeah, Red Gerard was on one in run one. He is your current leader. He is last year's champion. You are seeing exactly why. Check this out. Switch, backside, triple cork, 1440. The tone setter. And we welcome in four-time winner at the Burton US Open.
the Lavender King. I Mark like McMorris. that colorway on you, Mark. Thank you so much. It's a really strong color for you. Trying to bring out spring. I like it. In my color. <laughs> when you're How out you there guys? singing T-Bird. <laughs> uh, we know that you wanted to be in this final, but we feel lucky nonetheless to have you. You've been busy all season like a lot of others. Straight to it. What has it been like working on this hotly anticipated Burton One World film? Yeah, working on the Burton One World one world film has been absolutely unbelievable we've had a couple great trips already getting a lot of footage and for me as a competitive snowboarder to have the block of footage i have at this point in the season has been unheard of for me so it's been a nice change um a little bit frustrating obviously not to be competing it's a perfect day i would do anything to be up there but being here with you guys is a close second we'll take it and in the meantime let's take a look at the trailer i mean I don't, I don't I don't know who's who's spending the budget but they got a nice budget for this film. <laughs> Looks pretty like just regular, just like average film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Goosebump Central. Yeah, they've done an absolutely unbelievable job producing it. There's been crews moving around the whole the whole world, really, and meeting up with different riders in different locations, filming different sides of snowboarding. And I think it's going to be a great representation of snowboarding. And you know, the Burton team runs deep, so it's going to be a hell of a movie. Indeed. Well, we'll head back up to the top. So stoked to have you with us, Mark, as uh, we're, we're celebrating the spirit of the one and only Jake Burton, who made this thing possible. When we saw that footage in the open, you know, going all the way, well, this thing goes back all the way to 1982. And uh, the one thing that we do miss as we celebrate uh, Jake's life is, is seeing that face and his energy at the bottom of the corral as uh, we welcome in Torger Bergram uh, for his second run. What was that like when you get to the bottom uh, and, and there's Jake just so fired up? Oh, man, the, the feeling's unexplainable. To have a guy that pioneered the sport and to live in that generation, this sport will go on for hundreds of years, you know? To be in that position is just unbelievable. Well, and Here goes Torgir. Torgir on course here. Cab 270 on, coming in switch to that first transition jump feature. Cab double cork 900, that's exactly what went wrong on his first run. Yeah, those those features are really tough to ride and a lot of slope cell riders haven't had a ton of time on them. Um, but it's such a good good addition to the slope cell and I think Ooh. that right there was the coolest thing I've seen on this course all week. Wow. Landing He's in a nose butter. Chuck to nose press from like 40 feet deep. Incredible. Talk about control. He's got it. He's oh, yeah. got unbelievable board control and style. And I'm just super happy to see him in a final again. He deserves it. He's just had crappy luck with contests. Yeah, he's been so busy with contests, but uh, it's so nice to see him in the final. Uh, Mark, I want to go back to the movie. Um, Watch this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? How hard is it? That's the flair we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, no, Tina. no, you're all good. Um, I was just going to ask how hard it is for you to do a movie part, make that movie part the kind, you know, the way you want it to. Yeah, a lot of times you'll get asked to do uh, a video part, and it's you really focus on contests because that's what I've been doing, and you you jump in when you can, and then. When Burton makes a movie and you're a big writer on Burton and you want a good presence, you you get out there and you make that your priority. And contests have sort of been the second priority this year. We head back up to the top. Our leader, defending champ, Big Red Gerard, 
who absolutely loves this course. Red rides these transition yeah, I'm features. This course. Probably one of my favorite courses I've ever gotten to ride. It's really cool. They started to bring into the side hits. I think the US Open was one of the first people to do it. We have two side hits back to back, which has never been done where they're mandatory. Everyone has to hit them. I think it's really awesome. It's been really fun to watch like people doing different tricks than you don't normally see and all sorts of these 900 variations. And But yeah, overall, I'm a really big fan of this course. I think his voice is getting deeper. Yeah. Either that or he just goes to interview voice. Let's get serious. Well, he's, he's getting up there at the age of 19. Cool, boys. <laughs> you see his mom flying the red flag. You were saying uh, about red and this course. Yeah, red and this course are made for each other. He is an unbelievable rail rider, jump rider, and transition rider. And it's definitely catered to him, and he's riding it so strong. Um, Darcy was definitely nipping at his heels. I really did think Darcy was going to bump into first, but um, uh, we'll see what happens in run two. And if I'm Red Gerard right now, I mean, Tina, you said it, it's going to come down to every tenth of a point that you can get. Mm -hmm. My foot is on the gas. No safety run. Clean up those rails. Keep doing your jump line. Maybe try to step it up. There's that front side double cork 900. Into the there. cab double cork 1080. 1080. So he's taking it one step further from his first run. There's that switch board slide under flip out. Just casually comes in blindside. I think I know what we're going to see here. Switch backside triple cork 1440. And it's, it's official. Red Gerard is on one today. How hard is it when you when you send it that deep and landing a little bit wheelie to, to find your center on that last jump? It can be really challenging. Um, obviously, Red's riding a custom X, which is the stiffest board Burton makes, and I think that definitely came into play on that one. That was an unbelievable run, stepping up his cab double nine to a cab double 10, and then also stepping up the up box feature and then keeping the switchback triple 14 the same, but even going bigger and almost landing it cleaner. So we're gonna see a huge increase in his score and it's gonna be tough for people to catch him. When he gets that momentum going, it's, it's definitely tricky. And on this last jump right here, right? The switch backside triple cork 1440. I mean, Mark, the number of times that I've watched you put down a ridiculous trick to end your run you stomp it clean the crowd goes wild that's got to be like a drug like an unexplainable feeling if you can even put it into words yeah i was just gonna say it's it's unexplainable there's no better feeling to know you did it when it mattered and with all these snowboard fans enjoying it it's just unbelievable there you go oh wow does not improve well it's the first it was the first feature he got a 5.7 on that Wow. So even SLS. though he stepped up things down the run, just that you, one little feature. SLS no lie. SLS no lie for show, <laughs> but <laughs> that was a silly call. Nope. That should have been a higher score. That's where the overall impression maybe takes over. Right. Low score, yeah. Good call. Well, Sammy DeBuck had a, a tough start. To had some issues in his run, oh. but I mean, fully capable. Mark, if you could describe Sebe de Buck in one sentence, what would that sentence sound like? Oh no, Sebe, sleepy style. Yeah. Doesn't ever look like he's trying. I'm not sure if he is trying now, <laughs> but um, it is such a rad thing to see him in the final because he is everybody's favorite snowboarder. He has unbelievable style. To be that tall and look that gracious when you're snowboarding isn't an easy task and he is um, he's at the forefront of that yeah. so so Sebe de Buck that's going to be another throwaway run it was the exact same thing mm -hmm. as his first one it was that little kink on the end of that down rail you know we saw it in the course preview oh. and it may not look like much <laughs> but that was, that was insane that was that's what we like to see if you're not going to have a full pull do something <laughs> we're all going to love yeah. and he's the master of that he's got a deep bag of fun tricks to watch. Just slow motion back row, just like, I'm just gonna hang out here and fly a kite. As we check out the replay here. Switch back lip. Switch back lip, and just gets hung up on that kink. You know, as I was saying before, it's like, it's literally eight inches of rail, but it's the difference maker in your score and whether or not, you know, you ride away from it or you don't. 
It's oh. crazy to think it's just that small little part. That was the most beautiful backside rodeo. That stale fish. Oh. Yeah, oh. not a lot of people grab stale on back rodeos. Like Mickle, Him and Mickle, Mickle bang. bang. That's what I was just gonna the say. Nickel. Oh. I hope he puts it on his, puts it together on his third run because he is such a treat to watch and I know he's got it in him. Yeah, I love watching Sebe ride. He's got one more run to go. All right, well, we'll head back up to Hiroki Kunitaki from Aichi, Japan, 18 years of age. And when you're getting into your uh, mid-20s, Mark McMorris, what, what's it like when, when the whippersnappers start nipping at your heels? Because you were that <laughs> dude not too long ago. Yeah, very much so. Um, I can remember that time, and I can vividly feel this right now. <laughs> and they keep getting younger, and they keep getting better. I've never even heard of this kid, and that's always what the Open is. They'll just show up and blow up. Yeah, it's always an introduction for someone. Frontside 1080 tail grab. Yeah, and already this is a much improved run from that first one. That was insane. Back 12 oh. into the half cab on. To like Nolly back rodeo? Yeah. Cab 14, cab triple. Oh. People are going for broke. Going for the cab 16. Even if he would have maybe just done a cab 1260, yep. just to get something down on his feet. Yeah, he's 18, Tina. He hasn't learned that. that. That's true. <laughs> yeah, and I don't and think this guy's finals. going for no. fifth place. He wants to get on that podium, and that's what you need to do. And I, he did have a couple hiccups, so he, he, needed to, he needed to do that. Banger at the top with that backside 450. And that front side 1080 tail grab right there. Scoring a 6.4 out of 10. And there's that back 12. This is where it gets weird. Half cab on. Nolly back rodeo. Nolly back rodeo out. I think it's been so cool to see the mix up in the traditional three jump line. It's two of those jumps that are quite unorthodox. A random rail feature that also provides a lot of airtime too, so they can keep their speed for the final jump, and then the big money booter. It's been gotta, really fun to watch. You got to think that uh, Hiroki Konitaki could easily be uh, a, a, a runner for that Rookie of the Year award at Absolutely. this year's Open. Absolutely, hundred percent. Absolutely, he's showing a lot of potential here. And besides uh, winning the event, so many different other opportunities with that Rookie of the Year award, the Burton Writers Choice Award, where called amongst the peers. And here comes from Sweden, Sven Thorgan. Yeah, this kid is just so powerful, so precise in his approach to slope style riding. Battled a couple injuries the past few years, but came back stronger than ever. Switch back lip, same way 270 into the cab 450. What's he got here? He went oh. huge on that front side double court 10. Into the double backside rodeo. Okay. Oh. Are no. you oh. he You've won. gotta be oh, no, 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 no. That was, that could have gone so Terribly bad. wrong. You saw him, there was like a split second of panic, and then he was like, okay, I gotta get out of this. He 90, stayed very composed. Yeah. 99.9% .9 of snowboarders alive, that split second of panic turns into more panic. <laughs> His turned into composure. That's That right there, it's just called air awareness. Yeah, he's like, oh, this sucks, but I, I can deal with it. But yo, he, this top half of the course, he went nuts. Yeah, he, he really, had a run going. He really stepped it up in that rail section and the jumps too. Frontside 1080 double cork. Look at the pop that he gets. And he took off from way back, landed perfectly deep. This double back rodeo nine. Did and he that, clip on the start? Yep. Oh no, he hooked his edge on the snow, but yeah, he totally had it. I don't know. He was a little heel oh. edge heavy, and he just caught that heel edge contact point of his board. 
and it sent him to his back. <laughs> How's that smile? Wow. <laughs> Good spirits. Moves. Look at all of the other scores, yeah. though. Eights, nines, eights, nines. So I think that was there's the, potential. The highest score, that 9.2 on that first side hit, that was the highest score of the yep. event. Yep. And his top rail as well was in the nines. That yep. was one of the highest scoring uh, tricks on that first oh, rail island. looking forward to his third run. I mean, this is what it is. Like, nobody, there is no chill at the U.S. Open. Zero chill. All right. Well, this was, this was uh, Louis' pick to win this thing. John Haggis. He has the tricks to do it. From the snowboarding mecca of La Jolla, California. <laughs> Cab 270 on, 270 off. And a ripping surfer as a result. Front side 270 to regular. Yep. Oh. Oh. Front side 1080, and he just kind of lays it back a little bit. Too heavy on the tail into the backside double cork 10. And he's going for the cliff bar, that elevated flat bar there. Front blunt 450. Into the switch back 12. That'll turn into a 16 on run three if everything goes according to plan. Well, you know, Mark, and now, any competitive snowboarder has been in this situation before where you can't put two to your feet. In a best of three run format, are you feeling the pressure? Is, is the heat on at that point? How does that change your mindset? 100%, heat is on. He's gonna be nervous as could be, you yeah. know? And he knows he's capable of doing it, and that's the hardest part is knowing you have the tricks to do so. And That's almost where it becomes more mentally challenging than phys physically challenging, is, is staying out of your own head. Yeah, I've dealt with that a lot. I was going to say, you've unfortunately been there more than once, but it, there seems to be a, a, a part where you thrive and be like, okay, this throws me into another level of focus. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times it does enhance my riding or enhance my performance, and I'm super grateful for that. And uh, a lot of people, it can hinder them, and yep. you got to take it as positive energy, and it can be tough at times, and I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things. Well... It is Ono oh time. Yuki Kodono, a.k.a. Oh, no. That first run was mind-blowing. Again, we have a simultaneous uh, broadcast available in Japanese on Red Bull TV. The audience and the, the snowboard knowledge and love uh, within Japan is deep. Well, they are just producing some of the best snowboarders on earth right now. Slope, pipe, all of it. So Yuki on course, switch backside, oh. 270 on, 270 off. Now that's where he did need to clean it up. His jump line on run one was insane. He that just maxed that feature out. Trajectory on that was perfect. There's the cab, double cork, 900. Come on, Yuki. Yeah, Yuki is on one right now. Mark, what are we going to see right switch here? Switch back 16. Go, 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 go. Switch oh. backside. You said 16. it. I can't. I can't with him. From wow. Yuki Kodono. That is one of the tricks he shocked the world with in 2015. He did it again in 2020. I love that Yuki. Was. He's had such a tough time with contests since he won the U.S. Open in 2015, and he's always been capable of doing it. And it just <laughs> it brings straight up so much joy to me. I'm so proud of this kid. He's the nicest guy going. Well, that scream just literally was the definition of everything that you just said, Mark. Now, keep an eye on these live ranks here. 8.1, he did clean that first rail section up. And here's the switch backside, 270 on, 270 off. Super technical rail trick, 8.5 on the live rank. And he just this. nailed this. That trajectory where he lands on that landing, it's perfect. And one of the trickiest tricks to do, an alley-oop backside 12 to stop the rotation is insanely hard and a perfect cab double, all in the eights and nines. He's, and wow. So there's an 8.8 .8, and then the final jump, a <laughs> switch backside 16.20. We're gonna have a new leader, folks. Got, that's the highest jump score we've seen today, 9.4 out of 10. It's the hardest jump trick we've seen. 
All purples. Look at that trick score into the 50s, 52.5. You know that overall impression is coming in hot behind it. 89.3. And he says, excuse me, Red Gerard, but I'm here for, with some Ono oh for you. Yuki Godono back in the top position for the first time since 2015. That was ridiculous. Quintessential US Open men's final slope style run. His reaction on his face says it all. Yeah, he, he's, ec he's ecstatic. He's um, tried for four years, you know, and to go, to go and do it when it counts is just got to be an unbelievable feeling for well, him. I'll, I'll, you can start to doubt yourself, and there he goes and does it. Why don't you ask him yourself, because Yuki Godono is on headset right now. Yuki. Yuki. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> that was amazing, buddy. Thank Good you so job. much. How did that feel? How did that switchback side 16 feel? Uh, that was unreal. No, uh, no sorry. hand drags, no nothing. Yeah. Perfect. You were perfect top to bottom. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you so much. Ah, Seiko. Hey, Yuki. So the last time you won here was 2015. Uh, five years later, now 2020. What's it feel like to have that score again? Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's how Happy. good it feels. <laughs> <laughs> That's Happy. how good. Yeah. Well, they're watching you in our separate broadcast uh, from Japan. Do you want to say anything to the fans at home in Japanese? That's <laughs> all. Right on. Arigato. Arigato, Arigato to you, sir. We look forward to your next run. Welcome back to the top, Yuki Kudono. Woo! Woo! Oh. You know, you've said it, Mark. Like, ever since he won in 2015, I think there was a level of expectation put on him, and just the contest scene wasn't going his way. Yep. The pressure can get to people, and yep. when you when you do so good and then everyone expects something from you, it can totally hinder you, and he just rose to the occasion, and nothing makes me more happy to see that. Well, looking focused to build on that momentum yeah. is yeah, Stolle Sandbeck. You just heard him say, yeah, Yuki, that was sick. And what, what is it, we talked about it with the women, but you know, when someone lands a run like that and then you get to go next, it can be can be tough, but it can also be motivational. And Stale is totally, ha he totally has the tricks to win. He's an unbelievable transition rider. And you see him taking off from the Red Bull wall ride feature on that cab hard way too. And the cab double doesn't look like it's on the right axis. Yeah, Stale not, that's not what it's, that's not gonna be enough today here in finals. And, but those first two rails, I mean, he was in his zone. He was in the zone. And he rode really well on Wednesday. He totally deserved a spot in this final and has the tricks. They just didn't come together there. Yeah, we, we've been talking a lot about what the differenti differ differentiator was on that day. And it was hands down, it was the light. That light was really tough. Flat light is never easy. And it's hard to see transition. It's hard to see landings. It can, it can really just hinder performance. And, for me, I think I just played it a little safe. I yep. wish I would have done a back triple on the last jump, but those are only things you can work on to change for the future. Yep. But um, today is a picture perfect slope style day. There's no wind, the sun is out, and the course is amazing. Hey, on those transition features, how long did it take you guys or you to figure out exactly where to take off on that lip? It, it can take a little while and you start small and you move your way back as you want it, as you want to do a bigger trick or have more hang time. And um, as the week goes on, you get more comfortable with them. And everyone you go around the world is different. You can see how they're on a, a cant. Yep. You know, you're coming down into them. A lot of times, you got to go wide and come into them. So this is a this is a unique way of building them. And I think it's actually we're seeing some of the best back-to-back -back combos we've seen. So I think, yeah, it's it's the best it's been. We look forward to Stolle's run. I mean, he got a nine and a 9.2 on those first two rails. He can continue to build on that. Whew. This is a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. How about we take a look uh, at some comparative scores? We'll do a little split, split screen uh, between Darcy and Yuki, uh, and we can uh, just watch the different approaches in real time. Yeah, so we got so Darcy's taking a little bit more technical approach on the first rail, but Yuki's hitting the more technical rail. Pretty similar on the second feature, 
And Yuki, you see, doing a backside 1260 and Darcy doing a backside nine. Double grab, though. Darcy with a switch back nine, taking off way deeper than Yuki, but Yuki doing a cab double cork nine. And sending it deeper. Yep. Yeah. Yuki doing a front board 830 Eight. with Melon, and Darcy <laughs> doing a front one to switch back five. And then obviously a switch back 16 trumps a front side triple cork 14. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Side by side comparison from the man himself, Mark McMorris. But I feel like, you know, if you're Darcy Sharp now, you know what you have to do to totally. overtake Yuki Kodono. And I think he can totally do that. Yep. It's going to be tough, but he does have the bag of tricks. All right, well, let's head back up to the top and see the manner in which Darcy Sharp is able to dig into that bag. Again, that the joy of that SLS system uh, with Darcy in, sh in third is knowing each exactly where you need to improve on every single feature of this course. Yeah, you can get, as a rider, so analytical with it in between your runs and know exactly what you need to improve. And Darcy is an astute competitor. I guarantee you he's going to try to rise to the occasion. That much better than run one was insane. 270 on, 270 off. I think we're going to see the first trick the same, but then he's going to go switch back 12 on this next one. So trying to go. Got to go, got to go, got to go. No. Oh, oh switch back 10, and he sent it a little deep there, but did you see how far uphill he took off he's on that transition? Huge he on was that. going huge. And he's taken off so deep so he can catch the top of the tranny and not have that crazy impact because. The trick he's trying is incredibly yeah. difficult. So that won't do it for Darcy Sharp. However, I'm really interested to see his rail scores. I think they're going to be a vast improvement. And if he can, you know, get his the first run jump ability, second run rail scores, it's it's game on. See how he kind of stalled it out right yep. there and then came down and landed? He took that we kink all, right in the middle yep. of the bindings. We all, we all felt that in our hearts. <laughs> like, deep oh, in our that, hearts. That was, that was good. Ah, oh, just a little too slow. Switch back 10. And then who doesn't like that? Yeah, thank you for that, Darth. Yeah, score or no score speaks volumes in and of itself. Just a classic backside air, just a method. So he'll stay in that third place position, and you see 41 degrees at Vail is basically like 80 degrees at the coast. There's kids down there in T-shirts, enjoying the vibe on a absolutely perfect day. Mark, you even mentioned it, like just the fact to not even have to deal with wind. There, yeah, it's, it's a perfect day for it. Well, our number one qualifier, in Dusty Hendrickson. <laughs> in a T-shirt. He says, yeah, T-shirt vibes all day for me with the pink beanie. Let's go. He um, looks like someone out of Cool Borders. He's straight <laughs> from the 90s. I love this kid. And he showed up not intimidated in this final. You would you, you would you wonder, like, okay, number one qualifier, would he get rattled? But he is clearly here to get on the podium. Oh, that was amazing. Oh. Well, he's already won. I mean, he won that Grand Prix in Mammoth just a few weeks ago, his home mountain. And I think after he won that, he realized, like, you, you know what, I can do I'm it. here to stay. Yeah. That, that trick defies all logic and physics, in my opinion. Backside 16, you got to go, buddy. Oh, quad. Whoa. Oh, my God. He just did a backside quad, and he totally could have landed it. Oh, he put it right to his feet. Oh, my God. Where did that go? That I, I can guarantee that was the first time he's ever tried that. It was almost That's some U.S. Open. Quad Rupert Cork 1800. The Whoa. only rider I've ever seen actually land that is Chris Corning. Yeah, that, that trick is quad. so ridiculous, <laughs> to be honest. Him? But uh, I'm surprised he didn't just go switch back six, or I mean backside 16, but obviously landing regular is a little bit easier, and he had the time to do it, and he almost had it. I didn't know that he had that trick. I don't think he does, T-Bird. <laughs> I think that was an <laughs> FT. Your reaction, wow. Mark, you were just like, wait, what? Did you see how... Hardy pushed off the takeoff. He almost went a little early, but he totally got that around. One, two, two three, four. Oh, he had it. He almost he had was it. Almost like he was surprised he put it to his feet. <laughs> I think he was. I want it. 
I, we I, need to go down there and ask if that was his first attempt. I, I, I heard him say to someone right before we went up back to the top of the replays, like, whoa, that was scary. I bet. There is some serious consequence if you don't rotate that and hook an edge. There's so much momentum. That is easily, in my opinion, the scariest trick in slope style snowboarding right now, and that's why you don't see it. And imagine it being your first ever U.S. <laughs> Open Finals experience. I mean, he's got absolutely nothing to lose. He's trying nothing. to make his move or make his mark. Well, you said you know the Burton U.S. Open is it's the place for the FTS for the first times. Uh, why don't we check in, Dusty? How's it going? <laughs> was that your very first time trying that? It was. I knew it. That was yeah. so close, dude. You're crazy. Thanks, I thought you were going back 16 for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. What sparked I was, that? I don't know. I was on the lip, but I don't really want to land switch at the J on yeah. accident. So I figured, what's another flip? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And you yeah. put that thing to your feet. You're yeah, going to get that on run three, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Were you surprised that, it, that you put it to your feet? Yeah, pretty stunned, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the run was perfect. You're you're just flowing. Good for you, man. Sweet, thanks. Man. Dusty, you easily could be, you know, intimidated, you know, coming into this final, qualifying number one. But right off the bat, you're showing that, like, you feel like you deserve to be here. What's given you this this energy to, to, to not be intimidated and, and seize the moment? I don't know. I'm just riding with all the boys. <laughs> it's pretty mellow vibes, so how can you get too scared? Hey, Dusty T-Bird here real quick. How does it feel to be the first rider to ever attempt a quad cork in a t-shirt? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Pretty cool, I guess. I'm down. We're putting it in the books. <laughs> Le less uh, less wind resistance. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well done, buddy. Sweet. Keep partying, and we'll see you back up at the top. Good luck to you, sir. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Dusty. Gotta love the energy. I mean, we get paid to talk, and I was speechless. That was insane. That was absolutely incredible. All right, well, there you see... Yuki Kodono, the oh no. He's saying, I want this one. Red's going to have something to say. These third runs are going to be ridiculous. Mark, thank you for coming in, man. Thank you for having me. I got to go out there for the live show. Yeah, buddy. All right, bud. Cheers. We'll catch you later. We will be back with the deciding third and final runs here at what is always a historic Time for snowboarding at the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. It's finals day. Here today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it can. Whether or not it will be done, we'll find out here in these next runs. But, yeah, these riders, uh, they've got some deep bags of tricks. So, Red Gerard can definitely step up. He's defending champion. He's got the bag of tricks. All these guys do. So we'll see what happens, but right now we're going to see what is happening down at the base with Henry Jackson, finger on the pulse. Henry, where are you at now down there? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, security have informed me that right here is the rowdiest part of the crowd, and I've been sent in to calm them down. It is, of course, the Gerard family corner. Look at them all. You probably know them all from such events as the Olympics and the Zoo Tour and all kinds of things. So right now, I'm, I'm on crowd control. I'm trying to keep them under control, but it's impossible. Give me that. Come on. Let's do this. We've got a Gerard. We've got Red out there looking for run number three. He's in second place now. These guys think he can do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got one run left here at the men's slope start finals for the Burton US Open. It's party time. So there you have it, checking in with the Gerard clan. And uh, we're here in the booth. Unfortunately, we, uh, we can hear the crowd down there. We see them on the screen. But I think we should get a little crowd check in before our third runs. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I'm down. You want me to fire it up? All right, let's try this. We're going to try it on three. We're going to do it on three. We're going to make some noise, some US Open noise to make it really official. So here we go. Welcome back to a magical day three, finals day in slope style at the Burton U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships live from perfection in Vail, Colorado. We are about to head into our third and final runs, the deciders, and it has been incredible. Yuki Kadono presently in first place, Red Gerardo defending champ right behind him. One of the great things as we welcome Louis back into the field here, 
um, one of the great things about this event is that it wraps up the entire season of snowboarding. And for a lot of people that are viewers at home, they think, okay, well, these guys maybe just do contests and that's how you make it. But for the majority of riders, it's about the contest and also simultaneously creating content. And those two things, making them flow together, that's what you have to do to be a pro in 2020. Yeah, and honestly, you know, these these riders are brands in and of themselves. They are marketing themselves to the masses, and then the companies they ride for are also doing the same. But, yeah, they're constantly creating content when they're not competing. Yeah, gone are the days that you can just rest on your laurels for the thing you did yesterday in an event or content-wise. And we'll take a look at what that means in 2020. Yeah, definitely takes finding your balance to get through a season of doing a lot of the big competitions and then getting to film. Uh, filming just takes so much time and energy. I filmed all day SJ during my competition season and uh, you know, obviously probably the most like exterior and internal pressure I'd put on myself during a season as well. When it's a good film day, you're pretty serious. You're making sure everything's dialed. You're leaving super early in the morning. I would say it's similar to that in competing. I'm waking up, starting to stretch, mobilize, and really harnessing in on what I want to accomplish on that day. They both have a different aspect of pressure, but they're both, like, so fun. It's kind of just a natural balance. We just uh, have Gimbal God travel around, and we just press record, and then we go. Best yeah, thing we could do after X Games. Just back to being young dumbasses again. Getting to juggle that competition element with this show, uh, honestly, it really helped me because when I wasn't snowboarding, it took my mind away from that day on the mountain and it allowed me to be, you know, more in the moment. I think it's crucial, the, the filming part. Snowboarding is not just based on results. It's, it's based on image and style and your personality too, you know, how you ride. Ready, pal, hanging out with best friends. When I'm in the backcountry doing something totally different, I'm almost re-falling in love with snowboarding and in such a good head place when I come to a contest. You need to find that balance and do what makes you happy because too much of one thing is no good. There are very few sports where the lifestyle of the thing is just as important of the doing of the thing, and that showcases it right there in snowboarding. Yeah, I love it when I get to go to a contest and see Jamie Anderson uh, in this context win, and then watch her movie part, and just it gets me excited to go ride backcountry, and then I book my next catboarding trip. <laughs> exactly, it gets you fired up to do the thing. My personal favorite is Scotty James's. Uh, all day SJ show. If you haven't seen that thing on YouTube on Red Bull TV, it is it's all time. It's, it's like flight really of the court. It's like flight money. of the concords meets snowboarding. Speaking of snowboarding, hey, let's get into this start list, into this re rack. Uh, as we head into these third and final runs, you see Yuki Godono, who is now in first place, gets to go last. Sebe de Book will start uh, in that number one slot. And what's that re rack do to your headspace? you know, as a competitor. You know, I, th I think the, it's almost pressure when you're Sebe, you're like, oh gosh, I gotta go first now. Whereas you might you might have been seated a little bit deeper, but if you're, you know, Yuki, you get to watch it all. You get to understand what do I need to do or can I relax? Yeah, and right now it's Yuki Kidono, Darcy Sharp, and uh, Red Gerard have just been going blow for blow. But then you got Dusty Henriksen trying the quad. Oh, it's against, this is, this is going to be beautifully weird as uh, Sebe de Buck, so happiness. On Sebe's first two runs, this it was the first rail that took him out. He can't quite seem to navigate this down rail with the little kink on the end. He was going for switchback lip. He's doing it again, and there he handles he it. That's normal Sebe de Buck right there. That's right. So switch board slide on the flat down 270. Mark Talk well, Rich. well, ladies and gentlemen, the big show well underway. Run the three here at Men's Slope. First run of the third, Sebe to Buck. 
We've been talking to him. We talked to him up top. Easily the event's biggest competitor. And I mean that quite literally. Coming down, final fell, so he's going double fronty. You love to see the Sebi de Buck double front. That is respect, respect. Sebi de Buck with the helmet toss. Okay, that is an age old move. Tossing your helmet into the crowd when you are in last place. You love to see that. Hyping the crowd up, he's throwing his bib too. It's all for the fans here, Sebi de Buck. Just the people's champ out here today. And the lose it all. Look at that luscious hair that he's got. Oh my God. Keep going, keep going. Oh, Sebi Devon. <laughs> Just, wow. I mean, if we are getting into a conversation, who has the best hair in the contest? Could it be Sebe? It very well could be. Sitting in 10th place, but 10th place was enough to make Brady Lem have to do a double cork, of course. If Tyler Orton is watching at home, hello, Tyler, creator of one of the best movies we've seen, Joy. Sebi to Buck, he's over here. Maybe we talk to him, Torgier. Kind of in the gate right now. Sebi, steezy move, handing out your gear. What inspired you? You did. I did. Okay, we've got Actually, the freaking X Games list. The, if you lose, toss helmet. If you, as I just said, respectable move, lose, toss the helmet, dude. So good to see you. What a performance. People's champ out there. <laughs> thank you. Zebby. All right. Thank you so much. Tour years dropping in. It's going to be a good run, I think. Our oldest competitor out here. Going for kind of a crazy buttery move, I heard. I haven't been able to. Really catch one of his runs yet. Laying a hand down, Torgier Bergram. Gonna be moving away. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm getting out of your background later. <laughs> Bye, Zebe. Thank you. <laughs> Holding on to it. Coming into the final jump. <laughs> Back 14. Quick back 14 for Torgier Bergram. One of the elder guys to do probably back 14s if I had to guess. Back 14 is kind of a 14 year old's trick in my book. That's the kind of body that you need, the kind of flexibility, dexterity that you're gonna need to pull that thing around. Torgier Bergram with the monster slashes on his helmet. That's a new one. He must have just picked that thing up. Uh, you know, he's gonna be happy with that. Nor we nor Norway X Games, he's on his way. This is kind of just his warm up, you know, squeaking in as we talked about the semifinals for this event were just such a mix up. All anything you could have expected out the window. And the finals was quite mixed up. Torrier going, there it is on the screen. Back 14. This kid means business. Lion Farrell behind me, just getting excited, yelling, getting shushed by Henry Jackson over here. Lion, how did that make you feel, getting shushed by Henry Jackson? Dude, I don't even, I come here to have fun and enjoy myself and to, you know, be put down like that is just harsh. I just saw you out there poaching. What was your uh, vibe out there? Dude, just sneak in, don't get caught. I guess they are weird about poaching slope style contests instead of in like, and not half pipe, but yeah, they were super weird. So Brock and I like snuck in there. Wow, <laughs> respect actually. So that that's good to know. Four years. That rail trick? No, no, the rail trick was just the 180, like the butter. Like what? That's just psycho. Psycho. We're gonna. I mean, he's on cam. We're gonna. Oh God, are they getting him? We're gonna try and get him. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Torgier. Wow. Okay. Back 14. What? What? How? Uh, it's kind of like chuck as hard as you can, hold on for dear life, and hope to God that the landing's what, like yes. your feet's what hits the landing first. Yes. And let's talk about that buttery rail trick real quick. Where where the inspo for that come from? Do you like that? We like that. Yeah, I kind of kind of messed up on the rail yesterday, and then I did it on accident, and I just went with it. That is like a happy accident. You love to see it. That's a shout out. Bob Ross, happy accident. Have you ever watched Bob Ross, the painter? I have watched Bob Ross, the painter. <laughs> you were kind of out there painting a picture of fun and joy for all of us, Torgier. 
Yes. So, I mean, what are we thinking as we come into this? Like, do you think Red can overtake Yuki? Well, if there's one thing Red can do, it's uh, anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Judd Hankey's on course right now. You know he's trying to bring an energy into this third run. Do you think he's... Uh, oh, lays back. You know, that layback is maybe going to prevent him from getting the kind of result he wants, but he could go crazy on the last jump. Any thoughts? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Show us some sick of the last one. Heading into it. Coming. Switchback 16. Calling it. Oh! Oh! What's going on? Almost went 18 on him. Yeah. <laughs> he tore your near the fat tire. He has earned it at this point. That's for sure. Judd Hankey's just coming down, not able to stick the run he was looking for. A big name that we've been talking about here today. Someone with an energy that was ready for finals. Great rail line as well. Wasn't able to stick it down. Kind of washed. Just the slightest little hand drag right there. Even though, I mean, this is quintessential 2020 slope contest. One little baby hand down, all your mojo's thrown off. So it's tough out there, but Judd Hankey's probably going to be a little annoyed. Still taking his bib off, though. They're handing it off. That is respect. Judd Hankey's great kid. Coming out of La Jolla, SoCal boy. Showing up here in Rado, signing a quick bib, getting some respect from the audience. We are just cruising right along here. This is kind of the main event. I don't know about you guys, but the slope contest just juiced me up so much. I think it's crazy. It's hard to believe we've got one more day of finals ahead of us, intense finals. But of course, don't forget, you're watching Last Resort Live with Stan. We are at the Corral. This is your behind the scenes look at the US Open, getting you access to places that you would never have access to otherwise. But of course, if you want the normal stream with the normal announcers, you can always go over to Red Bull TV. You don't have to hang out here with me, but I would sure love it if you did. As we're getting started, I don't know if you can tell, but the scene surrounding us has only gotten crazier as the afternoon goes on. People literally piling in here, trying to get a glimpse of who the winner's going to be and maybe share a little bit of that excitement with the winner. Gerard's back. Mark Clavin making a comment. Two cameras around his neck, trying to make it seem like he's doing something. Literally just standing here, though, with two cameras at his waist. I mean, uh, to be fair, no one is riding right now, but that's what you get for calling me out. If you do a quick call out, I'm going to have to roast you. So that's Mark Clavin. Okay, we are back in Sven Thorgren on course, front double cork 10, getting a little washed out. There, but again, Whoa! Double back, rodeo, double back rodeo coming in just because he washed out. Half no! Half cap double underflip off the up rail into the final booter. What's he hitting us? Oh! Wow. Going back 14 on him. Not able to get the run he wants. But the crowd is liking it, as we can see. Golf claps, claps all around. Sven Thorgren putting one down. I mean, not in the way, of course, that he would want to win, but just getting the crowd hyped. Sven Thorgren, someone you always love to see here in the finals. Uh, uh, we are moving a little bit closer, you know, as you know me, we like to get in a couple different live streams, as many as possible, so we can get in the background. The crowd here, ready and excited for a Red Gerard run. Will he be able to overtake Yuki? Checking out Sven's scores here. Of course, not gonna probably improve. And the autograph. 
Line begins. Oh, he moves up. Sven Thorgren moves up to sixth. Yuki Kadono just chilling up top. Sven Thorgren. Again, we are live. The only coverage of the US Open you're ever gonna need. Last resort, live with Stan. Down here in the corral. Crowds, look, how are we looking, crowd? You guys, you guys are looking good? All right, come on, what do you got? Who, who are we rooting for? What's the vibe, what's the feeling? We're going for red right now, all the way. We gotta go red. Gotta go red. All the way red. All the way red. You think he's got what it takes? Pull something out of his hat, take Yuki down. It's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day, he's got it. Well, you heard it here, the fans looking for a red. I see Red's brother here, Malachi, of course, holding up the red. It's hard to tell how old Red is in this photo. He could be 12. This could have been taken yesterday. I'm actually not sure. The whole Gerard family front and center to the show. Stale Sonbeck on course. Things happen so quickly here at the U.S. Open. Wow. Front. Oh, wow. Stale going front 16, hoping to get that one around. Wasn't quite able to stick it. Let's hear it for Stale Sombek. Completely gassed. A goofy rider. I don't mean that literally, of course, because the style he's got is insane. Sven coming over, giving a little European love. These guys, these Europeans, they like to stick together, you know? They have camaraderie. They like to maybe speak not in English, talk shit about us when we can't understand them. It's kind of a nice vibe because none of us really go out of our way to learn. So Stale just visibly tired, taking a seat here. No care in the world. Yeah, just respect on this. You know, got to love his body formation, the crowd kind of hyping him up. Stale Sonbeck standing up. Getting his score. And the crowd, the children are beckoning him. <laughs> the kids are asking for the goggles. This has got to be a tough one for the gang, you know? Do you hand out your gear? Do you leave it? Do you throw a high five? Asking for autographs. You love to see it. The crowd getting excited down here. Sunny day at the U.S. Open as we take a look at Red Gerard on the big camera. This thing is steadily moving along as we approach kind of the middle of the field here. Haruki Kunitake up there at the top, number seven. Of course, sitting in eighth place. Will he be able to bust something out, surprise us all, and get in there? Hard to say. Hard to say. 18-year-old Japanese rider. Big year for Japan here at the U.S. Open. As always, you know, Japan always shows up to the U.S. Open. If you want to listen to the broadcast in Japanese, we can hook you up with that. Front 10 off the right transition. And going back 12 on the second into the up rail, the flip rail, as I like to call it. That thing is just made to flip off. How do we feel about flipping off rails? I don't know, but they made it so we have to consider it. Oh, wow. Opens it up. Cab 16. He's going to be happy with that one. High five. And Stale getting in there. Who knows, you know? We'll see. The judges, I think, have been staying the scores below 90, potentially waiting for that quad to go down on the last jump. Hard to say if we'll see it. Some of the contenders might normally be pulling quads. Obviously not in the final this time. Maybe a Max Perot. But, you know, anything could happen. It is the U.S. Open. It is sunny. The weather is with us, so anything is possible. The score's waiting to come in. These are kind of the autograph kids over here. These guys, these are like uh, the people, some of the U.S. Open's biggest fans probably, really getting all the autographs they can, soaking in the experience. They've got their pens ready. I wonder... Uh,
Yuki Kadono up top, getting pretty hyped up with Yo about that run from Hiroki. 45. Run three, what's it gonna do for him? Will it push him up? I would imagine 79, a big improvement, but fourth place, pushing Dusty Henriksen down to fifth. Wow. All right, maybe we'll try and go talk to Stale. Stale and Gibble God. Stale, ah. love to see you out there. Couldn't quite put that last one down. Had you been able to do so, kind of a nice run. Who are we looking at? Is Dusty Henriksen going to be able to push into this top three, do you think? Possibly. That homie tries a quad in a t-shirt. It's warm outside, but the landing is ice. We've been <laughs> psycho shit. That's some jackass shit, dude. <laughs> as, as we've been saying, Dusty Hendrickson's kit, completely insane. As he told us up top, everything he's wearing cost him less than $20. So, you know, will he be able to do it? He's got that young energy, though. He's got that young kind of... He's kind of young. He's like 17, I think. So. He has almost a, 10 years younger than me. <laughs> he's almost 10 years younger. Out, that's why he's out here in the team. He's nine years younger than me. Out. Oh, he's he's one to look out for. One of my new favorites. Rides with power well, style. Right Let's there, see what happens. Yeah. Bitty, bitty back, back, back to 70. 70 two front two. Out. 270 out. Clean. Clean. Cat double. Pretty big. Cat clean. Nice t shirts out. Arms out. Flexing. Here we go. Arms, side, double. Double court, How clean was that? <laughs> sleeping. Why are you sleeping? Switch. There's that switch board. Yeah, you better wake up before this quad, buddy. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go, Dusty Hendrickson. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Go ahead. Dusty Hendrickson with one of the biggest yeah, tricks of the day. Big pile up in the files. Just. Dusty Hendrickson getting mobbed by the crowd. Lion Farrell on there. Probably a couple devastating blows. The guy's in a t-shirt. Goes quad in a t-shirt. Dusty Hendrickson. What are we gonna do about this? Completely mobbed. Yes, Dusty. The benches have cleared. Hugs all around. Unthinkable. Unreal. <laughs> Dusty, wow, buddy. No way. No way. No way. No way. No Dusty going big, quad in a t-shirt. That's got to be a new feeling for you. Yeah, it was pretty different. For sure. Wow. Now that's some U.S. Open energy for you there, okay? Quad, in a T, straight up chain wallet. They're pulling him into the studio. They're gonna wanna talk to that. Sal Masekela's definitely got a couple words for him. They wanna know what's up with that. Cord under me. Oh. Wow, and that, you know, you just witnessed it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you were able to feel that one at home. The way the crowd kinda just lost their mind there. We were talking to Stale before, did Dusty have what it would take to bu to bust it in. He said, well, if he goes quad on the last one, maybe. Backside quad, 9 point out of 10. Biggest score we've seen today from the young gun in a t-shirt. Okay, energy is high. Wow. But of course, the crazy news is, there are still plenty of people to come down who could, in theory, disrupt this whole vibe. Dusty Henriksen giving out his gloves. Wow. Hopefully <laughs> signing some autographs. The young kid has got to feel good about this. Again, we are live. This is Last Resort live in the corral at the U.S. Open. Hugs all around. Trick score is coming in. Forty-eight point pressure going to do? Can Dusty get on the pressure score coming in? Eighty-four point seven. That's going to bump him up right there. Wow. Second place. 
Dusty Anderson going into second place. Okay. If I had to guess, I would imagine some people would have thought he would have pushed into first. But, you know, I guess Yuki's run still standing strong, leaving Red Gerard is the man. Maybe to take him down, hard to say. What's going to happen, regardless of the score or the place, you just witnessed something incredible here at the US Open. The kind of thing that will not be soon forgotten. The kind of energy that brings us back year after year. Lion, I saw you uh, take a quick tackle. How do we feel about that score? Uh, that was insane. I, it's so hard because Yuki had such insane side hits, so he definitely was above Dusty on that. That last jump was just like, I, he stomped that thing. That was insane. It, he is, he's on the come up, and like he's already up. He's here already. He's like, where's he going to go? Yeah, it's insane. But I, honestly, that score was... It's SLS, so it's kind of accurate, but it was it was insane. The 9.8, like what? I've never seen that. 9.8, psycho, psycho. Big move. Lion Farrell, our favorite Hawaiian. Aloha. 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 To, to everyone at home. Of course, if you want the straight action, you can go to Red Bull TV. But if you want to keep hanging out with us, your all access pass to the US Open, stay close, because we uh, the fun isn't stopping anytime soon, anytime at all. Maybe we pull a Jake Canner. Jake Canner, pulling you into the live, Jake. How emotionally, where are we at right now? Do we think that Red can maybe move Yuki? How are we feeling? Um, wow, I couldn't believe that run. Um, yeah, Dusty's been my best, like, one of my best friends since I was like seven, so that was just mind melting. I've known him for more than half my life, which is crazy. Um, if Red puts down switchback 16, it's going to be a close one. This is a contest. This is a contest. <laughs> this is a contest. Uh, what's your energy finishing this thing out? Should Red put that 16 down? Is it going to be immediate mob? Are we going to tackle him? What's the vibe? Uh, yeah, he's getting mobbed. He's going to die. It, <laughs> call him the closer, Brad. No. <laughs> Darcy Sharp kind of up here now, though. What are we thinking about? What do we think? He's going front triple. It could be a one, two, three. And he's going right in the fourth, and then Red's going to put the 16 down and put back up. This is a heavy This is a heavy contest. Start your own live, okay? If you want to check out Jake Canner's live, at, at jake.canner. Check him out. New guy to watch out for. Darcy Sharp on course. Your X Games gold medalist. Will he be able to pull something out? Does a big pretzel 270. This backside spin double grab. Something I've really been enjoying. Come on, Darcy. Oh, sits down on a switchback 10. Straight airs off the up rail. That's going to be all Darcy wrote, probably. You know, still a stylish good little air front, front five on the final jump. Give it up for and Darcy coming in. Darcy Sharp there the base One of Canada's finest. The crowd is loving it. Mark Clavin with a nice golf clap here, but not taking his photo, obviously. So wasn't super impressive, I guess. But, you know, that's fine. Let's hear it for Vail, Colorado. Make some noise. Show your love for Darcy Sharp. Vail, Colorado is in the house. We are just... Yeah, loving life down here there. in the that's corral. You're all excess pass. Last resort live with Stan, of course. The full stream on Red Bull TV, should you need it. Louis Vito spotted on course, looking to get some words from Dusty Hendrickson. He is going to be someone that uh, a lot of people want to talk to, if I had to guess, after a day like this. Let's go. Maybe. Nice work, fourth place finish here. Is he in? Is he available? Yeah, Let's try. On. US Open. Russell, give him another big hug for me down there. Wow. Dusty just signing autographs, literally yeah. number one. We got cut off before, but just you must be through the roof right now. Yeah, I'm tripping there. This is so insane. Great golf, just standing. 
Did you think that that run was going to push you into first? I don't know. I don't know. I was just kind of trying to. Yeah. Incredible. Um, do you think uh, with this cash purse, we're going to think about maybe buying a long sleeve? Or I don't know. You just gave your gloves away. You're losing outerwear at an alarming rate. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to keep on to at least my shirt, but let's, we'll see how you end up. We can't really make any promises. They're playing some pretty dramatic music. What do you think? We've got kind of a showdown right now. Darcy Sharp off camera. Showdown coming out with Red Yard and Yuki. If you had to guess what was going to go down here, how is this thing going to play out? You know, Red is one consistent guy, and I don't know. They could go either way, and Yuki put down the most insane run I've ever seen. So, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty fifty right now, if I'd have to say. All right. Well, Dusty, dude, got you. You're kind of coming in on some MVP stuff right now, so that was incredible to watch. Coming down here, switch back to 70, pull back to forward. Coming in with a lot of speed. Double over to the nine. Now coming in. This is muted, but switch. 10 right there with the double cork. Onto the cannon box, Red Gerard. Still? He is back to Vicky coming in. Last jump, what's it going to be? Okay, sorry everyone, this is last resort live. Three. Oh. Oh. Red Gerard opens up early on a triple. Sorry we lost you for a second. Probably wanted you a little bit. A little bit there. Don't imagine that's going to take. Out Yuki, but an incredible performance nonetheless. Still on the podium regardless, as it's high fives all around for Red Gerard, the one man who could remove Yuki from the top. All cameras on him, Stale going in for a hug. Reggie, switch back to pull back, going straight into these features. A lot of people are saying these are Red's features. He goes switch, front side 10, double into the up rail. You know, he loves these 6.30 mute grabs, you know. He's liking those and he comes straight in. Straight into the switch backside. 14, okay. Yeah, Red! We're gonna wait to see this score. We love you, Red! A lot of us love you, Red. Alex, Alex, Andrew's behind me, of course. We've been talking to him all day. He's gotta be juiced up about his rider. I mean, what happens next? What are we doing for Red? Is are we spraying champagne? What do you think? I don't know. We're gonna pull the rug out. <laughs> He's pulling the rug out from under him. Red Gerard, a crowd favorite, undeniably sitting. Not three on that third place. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Red, you know what? We love you, buddy. No matter what happens. Any big energy coming on this podium. US Open slope Is that your big energy? Big energy. Yeah. Just yeah. had a victory last year. I mean, second I US I love Open run, title. So it, was, it was really fun to me. And, and Dusty did a card, which is insane. That is unbelievable. First time he's ever tried it. You can get out on with some insane runs. Man. Man, yeah, that one's for Jake. Let's do it. Thank you, Red. Yeah. So he's going to see that. That is Red Gerard. Fan favorite. People are all over him. I'm getting bumped out of the way because everyone's trying to talk to us. We got the Japanese crew behind us. All sorts of cameras around as Red signing some stuff and Yuki Kadono up top, our undeniably known US Open 2020 slope champion after an incredible second run. What's he going to do for a victory lap? Always a big question. We never know. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be a nice warm welcome for him when he comes down. Again, this is Last Resort Live, right? I'm your host, Stan, brought to you by our trusty cameraman, Eric. Where would we be without him? We'd be nowhere. And here he goes, Jake Burton Carpenter putting on a U.S. Open many years ago, and it still lives on. Such a good time, full sun. Oh yeah, just easy styling it as he already knows. He's got this one. Oh, wow. Big style coming into the last jump. Hopefully kind of a showstopper. Big method, yes. 
lot of method airs. Yuki Kadono, your US Open 2020 champion. And let the pig piles begin. Red Bull TV Japan channel trying to get in there. He's getting lifted up. <laughs> up in the air. Respect, Lion Farrell, Stale under there. Keeping him up, keeping him afloat. Hugs all around. Don't forget we'll have our official award ceremony tonight on the Solaris stage. Wow, unbelievable podium here. Red going in for the hug. Such a fun day here at the US Open. Cameras, Red Bull TV, everything's going down. Lion Farrell's in the house. <laughs> just went down, Yuki won. Okay, US Open 2020. What else? Yeah, that's, I mean, what else do you need to say? He's obviously been watching. He knows the vibe. He gets it. Haley Langland, how are we feeling? Just a quick. Thanks to all our fans for coming out, being part of Okay, how did, how'd that shape out? How are we feeling? Definitely Good finals to watch. Dusty with the t-shirt seems to be the highlight. I mean, what's your first impressions? Uh, Dusty with the t-shirt is kind of like some Big Bear shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's some gang stuff right there. Yeah. Big Bear in the house comes t-shirt, goes quad. Just yeah. Yeah. That was a messed up final to watch. I mean, I don't know if everyone was watching the whole time, but my jaw has been on the floor since it started. Unbelievable performance by all. Haley, you've been an important person, an important correspondent that we've been able to check to. What do we think is going to happen tomorrow? I'm hoping Danny pulls through with the W. I think this is kind of his, this is his element. He looks comfortable. It's going to be really sick to watch. Well, Haley Langland, thank you so much. You've been with us all weekend. We'll see you some more, I'm sure. We have seen you all weekend. We are going to try and get a quick little dap up on Yuki before we're signing off here. Get a quick moment with our winner. It really just got the stoke high. It, it started the day out just on such a positive note, and then we just went in perfect yes. weather, perfect competition. Oh, just an incredible day that. to celebrate. <laughs> I've lost my... <laughs> Eric, I lost you. That's Yuki Kadono. Your 2020 U.S. Open, Burton U.S. Open champion. He's getting pissed off to do an interview. Don't forget to tune in with me tomorrow, okay? I'll be here again at the pipe, at the top, finding out what's going on, giving you that behind the scenes look. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for what was undeniably one of the most fun afternoons I've ever had in Vail. And again, thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks, Eric, for filming. Thank you, everybody. What a slope event that was. We will catch you guys tomorrow for Last Resort Live, day four, the final day. Thanks for being you. Well, with no further ado, let's pay some respect to our finalists out here. Your podium for the 2020 Burton U.S. Open Med Slope Style Final. In third place, your defending champion from last year, coming out of Silverthorne, Colorado, and riding for Burton here at the Burton U.S. Open. Show your love for Red Gerard. And in second place, he was your top qualifier, but came through today on the podium. Put your hands together for Dusty Hendrickson. And Dusty with his first Burton U.S. Open podium appearance. Congratulations, Dusty. And your 2020 Burton U.S. Open men's slope style champion, his second Burton U.S. Open slope style title coming out of Japan. Let's get loud for Yuki Kadono! Omenito oh, Gozaimas, congratulations, Yuki. And now for the champagne showers coming out. Hands together for your podium here for the Burton U.S. Open 2020 Men's Slope Style Finals. Down for what indeed down there. 
epic riding from our podium finishers. All right, right now we're going to go down to Henry Jackson with a winner interview. Henry? <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm just letting you can get a little bit of a... A little bit of a wipe down, champagne shower, Yuki. It's been a few years since you've back, been on the podium, but you're back on top. How does it uh. feel? They weren't going necessarily for the scores, yes, but it was more about the tricks. Zoe continued to go for the double cork. Um, Hannah Gasser just going massive. And of course, Jamie Anderson taking home that win. No surprise there. <sighs> Snowboarding is in pretty incredible hands. I would say in 2020. Uh, you guys have been letting us know how you've been watching. Continue, continue to do so. Uh, hit us up at Red Bull Snow, at Bur Burton Snowboards, and of course the hashtag is Burton US Open. Uh, and since we're on Red Bull TV, I'm just gonna let you know one of the dope things that you can watch on Red Bull TV from the world of mountain biking. Crankworks, Rotorua back in New Zealand, the Crankworks World Tour 2020 from New Zealand, March 5th through the 8th. You can watch that live on Red Bull TV. The progression of mountain biking is just bonkers. Well, well today was finals Friday. Tomorrow is the big dance. Our modified half pipe finals, men and women. It is going to be next level. We'll start off uh, with the women tomorrow at 11 a.m. local time. What yeah, we'll see. Maddie Mastro will be back. She's the defending champion. Uh, if you go back to last year, this was where she landed the first double crippler ever for a women in competition. Yeah. Um, she's landed it one other time this year. Just one other time this year in competition. So we'll see if she can bring it back to the US Open and defend her win from last year. And then of course in the afternoon, the most dominant half pipe rider on earth right now. Can Scotty James go back to back in the US Open pipe finals? We're gonna get some rest uh, and try to recover from what we saw today. And we will be back with you tomorrow for the big dance on finals day. Until then, here are some highlights from today. Thank you to all of you for tuning in from around the world. We will see you tomorrow.